Hello, fellow alchemists, welcome back on another adventure into Elixir Land. Today we're going to go over maps. Now maps are quite a unique and important feature within Elixir. Uh, they're just a simple key value store. They're in a lot of different languages. And I'm just going to introduce you just to some, just to how they work, what's the syntax, and, and this kind of stuff. So let's go ahead, let's get started. So maps, uh, as I said, they're just a simple key value store. They're very, very similar to, say, dictionaries in Python, objects in JavaScript, uh, hashes in Ruby, hash maps in a lot of other languages, I believe, in C or C++, they're called hash maps. You give it a key, you're going to get a value back. You give it a key and a value to store, and then you can get that value later using the key, this kind of thing. Um, you can also think of it almost like a database, right? You can give it a primary key, like an ID for some type of uh, data in a database, and you're going to get back the whole row. So uh, as you can see, they're, they're very fundamental in programming. Uh, so that's why we need to actually cover them briefly. Now, here's something that you need to know is that you can pattern match on the keys, but you have to have the whole uh, term. Okay, you cannot pattern match on the value inside of the map, but you can pattern match on the key itself, and it has to be the whole key. And you can use any Elixir term or any type of Elixir uh, data as the key. You can use a list, you can use a tuple, anything like that. You can use as a key in the map. So simply the form is, in this case, it's a string with the name of key. And that fat arrow syntax is how you set the value when you're going to have a, um, when you're setting up a, uh, a map. The map always begins with a percent sign and then the curly braces. And then it would be the key and the fat arrow syntax. And that's going to point to the value. And what else is there to know is that if you're going to be using atoms, um, it has copied off of the Ruby syntax when you use symbols, where instead of, you know, if you can see in the first form, uh, colon, key, fat arrow, string value, you can actually shorten that, remove the fat arrow, reverse where the colon is, put it at the end, and it's going to be exactly the same, but you don't need to have the fat arrow syntax. And this is going to come in handy in the future, and I'm going to show you why uh, in our next video. But let's go ahead and let's start to show you what you can do with maps. So here's our project. And I'm just going to work in the IEX and show you a little bit about how maps work. So uh, map, you can just set, set it with a literal uh, syntax. You can do it like this. This is just an empty map. And for an empty map, uh, you can also do things like you can you can actually use the map module and you can put a key but here's something that you need to know is you cannot put a key onto a map oh sorry this like you can <laughs> sorry you can put a key onto the map uh, using the put um, but you can actually not what you can do, if you want to update this, there's actually a shorter syntax. You can use this syntax. To update it. But you cannot use this short syntax to update a map. You can do this. This syntax we have over here will not let you add a new key. It's only for replacing keys. So it's something to keep in mind. Um, there's also a put new function, which operates the same, but it's only for putting new values there. As you can see, because uh, the nice part about this put new is, this is why I got a little bit confused, but now I remember, apologies. This put new uh, will only put 
the value and the key if it's actually new. So it's kind of a nice way of saying set this as default if it's not already set. So for instance, if I change this to B, it works just fine. But it will not let me override that unless I use a put, which will just put it no matter what. It's something to know. And like I said before, we can pattern match. And I already showed before what we can do. Um, and also something to know is that there's no way you cannot use this to pattern match on a map to see if it's empty or not, because as you can see, it's going to work fine. So if you use an empty map and try to pattern match to see if the map is empty, it will not work. Okay. You'll probably have to use an empty function or something of that. Um, what you can do is probably, yeah, you can use keys on the map and then you can check to make sure that the length of the keys is equal to zero. That would be the best way to check. But going back to the pattern matching, if you remember, um, if you look over here, our A, right, we have a greeting. So what you can do is you can use pattern matching again to set the greeting, this kind of stuff. Um, and you can see that I'm using the short syntax. We can also use the longer syntax. It's exactly the same. In fact, I can show you that by pinning the variable. If you remember we pin, it'll be the same. And as you can see also, they like to use the short syntax when printing back to you. It's something to remember. These are exactly the same. Um, and that is it. And the reason I want to talk about maps is because we're going to be going over some another data type, which is built upon maps in the future. Um, Please let me know if this is a useful introduction about maps. Uh, I believe that there's a lot we can say, but I think it's better to show you more as we go along. So again, this is Alan from Plangora, and I'll catch you guys next week with a new episode on Elixir. Thanks. See you then. And don't forget to subscribe.